Hi, and uh, welcome back to Boost Stars. Uh, we're going to have a look at the lunar cycle. Uh, I've started these um, um, kind of weekly things uh, going on with the uh, lunar cycle to get you in sync with the lunar cycle to help you sort of get in, get in charge of your life. Uh, That's what we all want to do, uh, be in charge of our lives and be able to control our destiny. Um, but you know the the uh, lunar uh, it, the phases keep moving on. You know, like uh, you get the new moon first quarter, uh, full moon last quarter. And each week they're a little different, so it's a bit hard to keep track of. You know, if I just post them on on each phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do them on uh, every Monday. Uh, maybe Saturday's a good day. I don't know if you if you like Saturday. Let me know. Send me an email if you prefer to have it on Saturday. But I'm going to start aiming to have them on Monday, so you know every Monday you'll see your, your week ahead, or you know, your lunar cycle. And wherever the lunar cycle is uh, during that week, I'll point it out and we'll get into it. So, um, so let's um, get going on that now. I've already posted one uh, before, and we're just sort of getting rolling on this and uh, getting used to it. But, um, so like, heading back to our example here, this is what I like to use. It's like a cross of, a cross of matter, you'll hear me talking about that a lot. Um, and it's like a baseball diamond. Life's basically a baseball game. I don't know if you like baseball or not, but I'm very keen on it. And, uh, you know, I, I really like when the season gets going. And I just keep it on mute half the time in the background while I'm working. And I just sort of glance over to see, uh, you know, what's happening. But uh, uh, it's, it's really interesting uh, how baseball's based on this. I mean, they don't know that. I mean, some of them sit down and start looking at astrological cycles and work it out. But it's just a natural rhythm that goes on there. But the thing is, with this cycle, the, the way I've got it laid out here, it's like in four sections. So you get the new moon, and this is how it, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, how life rolls on. All, all, all cycles sort of work on this principle. So you get the new moon, and that's, um, the new moon's like when we got, uh, let's say, the sun up there, it's nice and big, and we got the earth, uh, earth is here, and then the moon's in between. Well, when it's in between, it kind of disappears into the light of the sun, because the sun's so bright. And it's either above or below. It won't cause an eclipse every time. Sometimes it's an eclipse. And then uh, it orbits around the Earth like that. So when it comes over here, uh, you know, you get a half moon over here, you get the full moon over there, you get the half moon, and then it comes back and it disappears and it starts all over again. So this is like a model to show it. So you get the new moon here. About seven days later, you head towards the first quarter. So the new moon, the last one was like uh, Thursday, um, 13th of December. You can think back that far. Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Yet it was yesterday almost, but it goes by quick. And then each day, you know, you have that beautiful crescent moon as it's growing and, and getting bigger. And uh, it's uh, moving up, getting bigger, and then it reaches a half semicircle. So it's a semicircle and it's a right sided uh, illuminated semicircle. That was on the uh, 20th of December. Then we moved on to uh, uh, the full moon. Full moon's like when you get the whole round moon, and it's at the opposite side, so the sun shines right on it. So we see this big white moon, illuminated moon, looking at us. And that was on the 28th of December. And then we moved on from there seven days later. We got to uh, uh, last Saturday. That was the 5th, just a few days ago. That was the 5th of January. That was the last quarter. I call it Q3. First quarter I call Q1. Last quarter I call Q3. Full moon. And then now we're heading back to another new moon. So the last one was there, but the next one's going to be right there. It's going to be this Friday, 11th of January, and that's our new moon coming up. And uh, so it reached full, and then it starts waning. This part's called the gibbous, uh, or um, gib uh, gibbous, if you like. And it's coming down this way, and then down here we're down into the crescent phase. And then uh, on this side, rather than being the right-sided, it's the left-sided semicircle. And it, it rises later. After, after the uh, third quarter, it starts rising after midnight. We kind of lose sight of it. And, you know, we're all out of, out of sync with the moon. You know, if we didn't have so much light pollution, we'd be in touch with it more. Well, okay, new moon is the seed. That's when things get planted. So, uh, with the new moon that's coming up now, you got to, like, look at what's, in, what's coming up right now during this week. Because it, <clears throat> we're starting to slip into it. So have a look at what's going on in your life right now. What's going on? What conversations are coming up? Telephone calls. Especially as you head towards uh, Friday, because Fridays that, that's when the new one is in. So uh, and and a few days after as well too. So it's like this is where you plant the seed. So you know what comes up? What telephone calls? What conversations? What ideas have you come up? Um, has anyone sort of contacted you about anything? These are the seeds. If any issues come up, you know maybe you disagree with somebody on something. Well, it could be something that over the next lunar month, which is 29.5 day 
lunar month is 29.5 days. Could be that these issues have to get resolved. When you get the, and then when you head to the first quarter, the seed grows into sprouts and starts growing. Or you get the thing of it as flowers, it's at the flowering stage. Then you get your fruit up at the top. That's when you get your full crop and your fruit, and you can pick it. And uh, that's when the, uh, you know, reaches a full crescendo. So some people hate full moons. I know lots of my clients say, oh, full moons are terrible for me. But the thing is, you know, maybe they have it in the past, but you, get it, you can turn that around. And it's important not to anticipate something difficult. Because if you do, you're going to make it difficult. You got to, it's, uh, the power of thought is unbelievable. And you've got to think, you know, your thoughts are like, Her you know, Hermes used to carry a sword a lot of times. And it was to show the power of thought. Power of thought is as powerful as a sword. So you got to be, you got to be really selective about what you think about. It's not easy, you know, when you start getting sort of stressed and, and worried about things. And then after the full moon, then the moon starts to diminish in size, uh, and it reaches the third quarter. And that's uh, the third quarter, Q3. That's when you get sort of the outcome of what the uh, lunar month is bringing you, uh, and you start to, to make sense, like things like, oh, that's why uh, this happened or that happened, that kind of thing. And then we get to this last phase where we are now. It's like shrinking down really fast. And eventually down to like when you get to about uh, uh, Thursday, Friday, it'll just disappear. That's called the dark, dark of the moon phase. That's when there's no light at night. And they say that the veil between this world and the spirit world is very thin. So it's a good time, you know, to sort of daydream, meditate, uh, get ideas on what uh, the next lunar month is going to bring. So you can sort of anticipate what's coming up. It's going to be new moon in Capricorn, so it has to do with uh, sort of earthly issues. You know, the... Um, uh, the last new moon, that was in Sagittarius, uh, and, you know, the uh, Sagittarian moons, uh, you know, Sagittarian periods, that's always um, really uh, uh, upbeat and exciting. That's where, you know, you have the Christmas uh, rut, uh, spirit, was they're heading towards, you know, December 25th, you get the excitement of Christmas coming up. But, and now when we get, like, um, Capricorn, um, it's, uh, it's pretty different, because it's more serious. You know, January, you know, Capricorn's kind of a... Uh, their responsibilities, that kind of thing, getting the job done. So, of course, you know, it's not quite so bright after Christmas. It's like, you know, the resp taking responsibility for everything that you had, like, all the money you spent on gifts and everything else. But let's not get into that. We've got to think positive. We're going to think about how things are going to work out. So, um, and, uh, you know, t take a look at your life and see what's coming up with it. Um, and, you know, right now, and watch those seeds grow. And each time when we come back here, we'll have, you can have a look at your, um, your own chart or your own, you know, in the way you're looking at your own chart and building it up. And there's a few other things, too, that I want to mention uh, right now. That's, uh, okay, the wheat, uh, we've got, there's sort of a revolutionary spirit in the air right now. It has to do with uh, mer Mercury contact to Uranus. Uranus is that one there, and it has to do with kind of revolution. That's, your, that's the Uranus glyph. It's called a glyph. And that's a revolution. So you got that kicking in this week, and, and Mercury uh, was aligned to it, uh, and it was a square. There's Mercury. Mercury's like uh, like that. He's Hermes, Greek god Hermes, and he can, he communicates with the sun and he brings you messages. That's why he's got little antennas on his head. It's unbelievable, really. And uh, <coughs> so you got Mercury square in Uranus, and you know you got like the uh, idle no more um, uh, sort of uh, revolt that's going on. And they're talking about, you know, you're hearing it in the news, kind of the um, uh, Occupy movement, and how it's connected to that. And of course, you know, in other parts of the world too, there are, you know, demonstrations have been taking place. And in the Middle East, you know, there's continuing strife. So uh, the Mercury square Pluto, and it's in between, it's, it's meeting up with uh, Pluto as well too, uh, Uranus there, and then Pluto here. So, it, um, so what it is, it's in a rock and a hard place. So uh, you'll you'll notice there's a lot of, there'll be a lot of tension around you. A lot of people will be kind of stressed out. And time will be going by fast. It doesn't mean you have to be really stressed out. You can sort of rise above it. But it's just sort of the the mood that's that's around. And the other thing that's important too, um, let's put this move uh, let's move Pluto over there. Uh, there's been a lot of severe weather, uh, and a lot of it's not even getting uh, pressed. You know, Lebanon right now is at torrential rain. Uh, it's turned into snow. Uh, the same things have been going on in Turkey. I don't really see it being covered in the news. Um, China's been having like uh, really extreme weather as well too. Snow, fog, low temperatures affecting dozens, dozens of areas, provinces. It's not just isolated one area. It's covering a huge, a huge area. Uh, Northern India as well too. Like this was on the 3rd of January. 
Deadly winter weather strikes dense fog, bitterly bitter weather uh, disruption uh, right across northern India. And over in the Pacific too, uh, Solomon Islands uh, were flooded. That was like, uh, you know, at the end of December. And um, then, you know, the UK was having uh, a lot of flooding as well. There were tornadoes um, down in Texas as well too. Really strange things going on. And I'll tell you what that's connected to. Uh, and I may have mentioned it before, I'll just mention it again because it's still active. But um, Jupiter, Jupiter is like, okay, th this chart here, that's basically an astrology, that's the whole th uh, thing of an astrology chart. It's like uh, across the matter. So you got Aries at one end, you got Cancer down there, uh, you got Libra, and you got Capricorn. So those are kind of like the main point, they're called angles. And there's a lot of other stuff that goes in there. So, you know, when you look at a chart, and you get this thing. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try it. I'll, I'll get this up here sometime so we can have a look at it a lot better. Um, but um, that's this is sort of a simplified thing. So right now Jupiter is down there. Jup the glyph for Jupiter is there. It's like a four. Uh, let's try it again. And it's uh, It's spirit. There's a curve over the cross, spirit over matter. Saturn, which is all, you know, those Capricorn as it was responsibility, material issues. It, the cross of matter is over spirit, because Saturn, or Cronus in Greek times, was considered more important. Jupiter says you can do whatever you want. Zeus, create your own universe. And that's what we're going to do here. So, uh, so Jupiter's down here, and he magnifies things. So what happens if he connects, like, uh, by opposition. Like opposition is like opposite end. Square is when it's like a 90 degree angle. So right now he's connected over here and there's a star. And this is the thing. It's unbelievable because I keep discovering new things. There's the Pleiades. There's a constellation that um, uh, a star cluster called the Pleiades. Unbelievable. But we'll get into that another time. Uh, and this in the Mayans called it the Rattler. And the Antares, uh, this one here, let's put it down there. Antares uh, is the heart of the scorpion. And Aries there is the Greek word for Mars. And Ant, it sounds like it's like it's against it, but it's not. It's more like it's equivalent to or it's like Mars. That's what it means. And Antares is um, in the constellation Scorpio and is considered the heart of the scorpion. Uh, it's been known for a millennium. And uh, Jupiter is connected to it. And what I noticed with Antares is it's linked to floods. 2007, uh, there were floods in. Um, in the UK, huge floods that year. Uh, Jupiter at that year was over here and it was going, uh, it spent, uh, went over it three times uh, during the summer. I think 2010 or something, I gotta check that, uh, when it was over here forming a square to it. And then now it's connected by opposition. So it's been going in there like over the summer. So in the summer, like June, uh, there were floods in the UK and it came back again. It's unbelievable. It's a connection to Ontario. So it's like, it's, it, it comes every time. And uh, in the lead up to the Olympics um, in July, there was like the threat that the rain and the flooding would sort of wash up the Olympics, but it just stopped. So it seemed like Jup Jupiter went over it, uh, went past that point, and then it came back. When it came back by October, it started to kick it up again. And what it does is it stops. So in October, it stops, turns around, and starts coming back. So November, December, it started coming back to that position again. Um, and it's, um, you know, Antares is like 9 degrees Sagittarius around there. So this is it in Gemini. And uh, when Jupiter is like around 9 degrees, give or take a few degrees, it starts kicking in there. So what it's doing now as it's going backwards, <coughs> it's shifted in and, and connected with Antares. So you're getting the floods, uh, 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 rain, heavy precipitation in the UK. It's unbelievable what's been going on. The storms, you know, typhoons in the uh, Pacific. Uh, and, and it seems to be uh, connected to severe weather too. And, and I believe it's connected to the fires. Um, you know, like in Australia, there's huge fires. There's a massive heat wave that's covering most of the country right now. Tasmania is burning. All sorts of areas are, are having huge fires. They're calling it a catastrophe. And that, that's actually linked uh, to, um, as well to November 13. Now, I'll get into this next time because I don't want to go too long on this one. Uh, but at, uh, on November 13, we had a, a total solar eclipse. Uh, eclipses, as you, um, you know, I write on, the, um, on my thought for the day, are like uh, like uh, cosmic fingers. It's like a laser. It's like a light. It's a, <clears throat> actually a shadow that's cast across the earth, and that area is the area that's uh, coming up for uh, some events and uh, some highlights that are coming up. 
The last, um, on, no on November 13, it started in Australia, went across the Pacific. <coughs> it was, um, you know, it was seen by New Zealand and it went all the way to South America. Uh, there's been a volcano in South America since then. It's been erupting uh, Capa, uh, Capa uh, Hue uh, between Argentina and um, Chile. And then uh, uh, soon right after that, Australia had a, um, a storm, had a super storm as well too. It didn't get a lot of news. Right now it's got the fires. So there's going to be more developments coming up. So we'll keep an eye on it here. Um, in the meantime, Jupiter is like kicking everything up as well too, like touching and terrace there and connecting with it. So, uh, you know, those fires, you know, uh, the thing with Antares is like, it's a river Styx, it's the underworld, river Styx floods, that's the kind of the image that comes up with it. But then, uh, you know, you always think of kind of the underworld as being hot as well too. And it seems to me that the fires must be connected to that as well. So, you know, Australia having the fires must have something to do with the thing, uh, with what's going on with Antares. And um, so it seems to be a very dark kind of um, sinister energy that comes out of Antares. But let's keep an eye on it. Um, you know, maybe there's something positive that comes out of it. But I mean, it's it's a tough energy. So the thing is, for the week ahead now, uh, and what's coming up, you know, with this lunar month here, is uh, you know it's important to keep your thoughts positive. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of problems in in the world. Everything's like really tense. But um, you can still find your way through it. Uh, and you know, the whole thing, what it's doing is like making everybody want to fulfill themselves more. <clears throat> the clients I see are trying to find out. You know how to get the the perfect relationship, or how to turn the relationship they've got into into something better, or you know maybe they're happy with the relationship and they're in love, um, but they they, they want to sort of fulfill themselves career-wise. They've been sort of doing their jobs, um, you know, getting jobs that pay money, but it doesn't really fulfill the heart. And what do you do? Do you take a chance? Do you buy the guitar and uh, go to Hollywood? Uh, well, I don't know. Okay, I'm sort of having fun. I'm sort of exaggerating there, but you know maybe you don't have to go to that extent. But, it, you know, it, it could be a way that you can sort of blend the two or you find a way of really um, fulfilling yourself because that's what we have to do. We've got a short space of time in our life. We've got to do that. So anyway, that's that's the lunar month. I hope it's not too confusing. It started off simple, didn't it? And then we got, like, stuff written all over the place. But, uh, you know, as, as the weeks go on and we're doing this, we'll kind of refine things. And if you, and send emails. If you want to know something, send me an email and I'll, and I'll answer your question and we'll have a look at it on here. So anyway... That's the lunar cycle coming up. It's this Friday. Get ready, get your ducks in order, and off we go. So you have a fantastic time, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye.